Hello everyone, happy Monday to you all. Today I'm recording on a Monday, but by the time you see this, it'll be a Tuesday. And I wanted to come and just um, talk about hardships. So let me start by telling you guys that during this whole pandemic, um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been working at a hospital. Um, and so my job in the hospital is um, as a technician, uh, helping out with disinfecting and sanitizing high touch areas, such as phones, um, so like telephones, keyboards, uh, light switches, uh, elevator buttons, handrails, um, computers, um, seats, armrest, TVs, remotes, controllers, handheld devices, any and everything that you can think of that's high touch and used by other people throughout the day. And so the reason why I'm bringing and sharing this with you guys is because it's a challenge to go out there every single day. I may not be the doctor or the nurse that are engaging with the parent, the, the patients and administering the medicines and treatments to take care of uh, COVID infected patients. But I have a role, a part of the hospital. I have a certain role that's just as important. From the top of the hospital, the board, to the bottom of the hospital the janitors, the custodians, every single person has a job and a role to continue to keep the hospital system, the medical field, the healthcare system running. So I just wanted to share with you guys because I haven't been open about it. Um, and that's just because of privacy. And I know that some people aren't for the idea of going out during this time and going out to work and so I am working I am being paid for the work that I'm doing but there's no no one's forcing me to do it it's all on my decision and so I'm working seven days a week six to eight hours a week and the work that I'm doing is basically going throughout different departments in the hospital, spraying uh, the disinfectant on these high touch areas. Um, any department you could think of from the OR to the administrator's office, from the bathrooms to the doctors and nurses locker rooms, even the front desk, everywhere you can think of. And so the main reason why I wanted to do this is because I want to do what makes me feel. And so for those of you who are closer to me know that I've been out of work for a while now. Um, ever since the year started, I've been out of work and being out of work it shows you that it's a time of uh, personal development. It's also a time of getting closer to your loved ones, like family and friends. And so I took advantage of that time. It was about a couple months, January, February, and most of March. And so at the end of March, I was presented this opportunity to work in the hospital. I'm, I'm, I'm only working at one hospital. But the job that I do, there are other people who are working at multiple different locations. So I was presented with the opportunity and I jumped right on it. And that was because of the time that I took for personal development in January and February. The time that I took to grow as a person, but grow closer to my loved ones. I felt that when the opportunity came about, even during this time of the pandemic, 
I truly felt at peace. I truly felt that peace. And that was because of the peace that was inside of me and the peace that I leaned on and the faith that I have. And so I'm forever grateful for the opportunity for the few weeks that I've worked already thus far. And so I plan on working throughout this pandemic. So what many people don't actually know is that it's more than just me working and it's more than than me just uh, getting money. So in 2001, those of you who are old enough may remember that we had a 9-11 terrorist attack. Um, and so that's something we, as a country, the American country, tried to celebrate or try to honor every single year on September 11th. And so to bring you back to 2001, September 11th, during this time of crisis, my father was one of the first responders in this time of crisis. And so that really hit home. I guess to to help you understand where my mind is at on that particular topic. It's like it's like growing up with a childhood hero, right? And you grow up watching this hero saying the things they do the challenges they face, the people they save. You grow up watching their personal struggles, <laughs> even their personal um, detriments to themselves. You grow up hearing about their, their traumatic stories that they've experienced in their own childhood, right? And so when you really get to know your childhood hero on a deeper level where it's not just someone that you just know their name you, you just know what they like but you know what makes them fear and what they love the most you feel truly connected to that person to that individual until some of you, your childhood hero may be a superhero, like an actual superhero, like Superman or Spider-Man. I know for me, I loved and adored Spider-Man. That was because he was the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you know, he was the local hero. And he was protecting his local um, area, his community. So I've always adored that. I always looked up to Spider-Man. I knew that there was a Batman and I knew that there was a Superman. I knew that there was an Iron Man and that there was a God of Thunder. For those of you who don't know, that's um, Thor. So I knew all of these heroes and I was aware of them, but I stuck close to Spider-Man because it wasn't about how far he'd fly to the ends of the earth to save the person or it wasn't about the cool technologies he had that helped him defeat a uh, Middle East terrorist. It wasn't about the amount of money he had to provide for his equipment and his vigilante lifestyle. It wasn't about all those things. It was just about the fact that he worked with what he had. And what he had was gave to him by a spider, which is an unfortunate event. I mean, it's unexpected as well, but he worked with it, right? He used what would be seen as a detriment for many being bitten by a poisonous spider, he used that for his good. He used those spider webs for his good. Many of us who would have been bitten by this poisonous spider and gone through the symptoms that he has gone through, 
Might have felt like they were crazy. Might have felt like they couldn't handle such a responsibility. Right? And just imagine that. You go like this and spider webs just start coming out of your hand. How would you really feel about that? How would you really think about things like that? That's mind blowing. So I know that I'd be blown out of my mind. But what I do know is that Peter Parker worked with what he had, even being in high school. It didn't matter about his age or his experience. It just mattered that he had the will and he used his gifts to his advantage. So, so my dad's kind of like Spider-Man to me, for me. Because I've seen all of his mishaps and, and, and I've heard about his traumatic experiences and I've seen the struggles he's gone through. And just as much as it hurt him, it hurt me. So I was empathetic towards him and his struggles. And so just to wrap everything up, because I don't want to bore you guys. And I know that you guys have much time to be spending on other things. My father's my childhood hero. And he's greater than Spider-Man because he's real. And he's my father. So when I heard that my father or my childhood hero was on the front lines of our country's 2001 terrorist attack, he was there. He worked for Con Edison. And so he was sent down there to shut down gas pipes just to make sure that whatever damage was done to the structure of the building, it wouldn't affect the gas pipes. And if it affected the gas pipes in a negative way, there could have been more explosions there, right? So he was at that time, a part of the team that helped shutting down gas pipes. And that was their main job. That was their main responsibility. But for those of you who have gone through 9-11, know that even though you are a first responder and you went, upon, you went on the scene with a predetermined mindset of what you were supposed to do, you knew that that, that wasn't all that you did because there was so much help that was needed. There were people out there that needed to be dug up out of rubble. There were people out there that had broken limbs and, and blindness and deafness because of all the dust and dirt that was flying in the air. And there were people out there that needed masks in this situation because just to say the dirt and the dust would enter into your, your, your system and, and, and and worsen your effect even more. And then there were people out there that were going through trauma, a mental trauma. And so for those of you who don't know, because maybe you're just young or maybe you weren't around when that happened. You weren't in our country when that happened. For those of you who don't know, 9-11 was a bad, bad time for us. But those uh, those first responders that, that, that went there and that were on the front lines for days on end, digging people out of rubble, those are our heroes. Those are the people we look back at, we see what they did, and we take that and bring it to our current situation. See, the difference about the COVID-19 pandemic that's affecting our country, but not just our country, our world, that's it. That's the difference. It's affecting us as a whole people, as a world of different tribes and nations. And so we're all being affected by this. 
And another difference is that it's not just one day of an event that we're dealing with here and now. COVID-19 pandemic has been going on for weeks on end. It's been going on since January and we're, the government's just becoming more serious about it in March. So it's been going on for a while now and it's still going on and there's still people being affected by the virus and there's still people dying from the virus. So it's a serious matter. And it's just as serious as 20, 2001, 2001, terrorist attack. And I think it's even more serious. So when I look back and see all that my father did, I recognize in this time, I recognize how peaceful I am with the decision. I recognize that this is a time for you and I. And so that's why I chose this opportunity because I'm trying to live as my hero did. I'm trying to live as my hero did. So for those of you out there who may have an opportunity to help in some way in this pandemic, whether it be outside or in the house, take that opportunity. Don't let it pass you by and stay focused on that, right? We're, we're all created with purpose. So we have purpose. So find out right now, challenge yourself. If you don't know, what is your purpose for this time? Thank you guys. I hope you have a pleasant week, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you guys next week.